I'm back. It's Monday. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. It can mean only one thing. Only one kind of video do I release on Mondays following a night where there was an episode of everybody's favorite short-haired Australian lesbian. That one. What? No, I'm not afraid of it. No, because I'm not an idiot. I'm in my office. He was a retard. Those people out there? Well, you know, hey, whatever happens, happens. The end is nigh. The end is nigh. F***ing run away. The end is nigh. Batwoman was on. You're gonna fix that, right? They need their Batwoman news. You need your Batwoman news. The lesbian! <laughs> Have no fear. E. Tepokuin in a place to be reviews is here. <laughs> Well, here we are, another episode of Batwoman, and I know you've missed it since last week. So where should we start out this week? Let's see. How about we start with the mitzvah of Kate and Beth, and them being given birthstone necklaces from their mother. This will come into play later on, my friends. Trust me. Just like bad script, bad acting, bad writing, need I say more? Come into play in every episode of this show. Ah! This week's episode starts with an anonymous woman being followed down an alley and verbally accosted by a white man, saying anybody with legs like that doesn't want to be left alone. Then, Batwoman shows up randomly. She dispatches him after he shoots her at point-blank range with a 357 Magnum, which just bounces off her, doesn't move, like nothing happened. She's called away by the bat signal. And the woman says, well, maybe next time I can get a selfie. Batwoman says, yeah, you're right, maybe next time. <laughs> Gay! Kate responds to the bat signal, finding an unconscious man tied up next to it and a note in his mouth that says, Ask about Mommy Dearest on closer examination. This is none other than Mouse's dad, Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright! Gee, I wonder where that note came from because the unconscious man, like I said, is Mouse's dad. So Kate calls in Jacob for this one and he still thinks that Alice is dead, not realizing that it was good Beth that died and evil Alice is still running around the streets causing havoc, or so he thinks. Alice is searching the house of Mouse and dear old dad when she happens across him in the basement still attached to this canister of fear toxin and he believes that Alice is dead and she explains to him that it was not her but another Beth who perished. I know, it's confusing. It doesn't make any sense. There was two Beths, multi-Earth, multiverse. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Crisis, blah, blah, blah. Turns out that Mouse had Grandma staying with them, and it appears that Mr. Mouse's dad had kind of a weird relationship with his mom. You want an explanation? God is pissed. Kate are trying to figure out what to do with Mr. Mouse, and murdering him and burying the body is hilariously discussed, but obviously not carried out as our two are, of course the protagonist and not the antagonist. That's something Alice would do, not Beth and Jacob. This is all wrong. Alice and Mouse are discussing what the toxin did to him, and Mouse reveals to Alice that his greatest fear is her. He knocks her down and puts the toxin mask on her and turns on the tank, leaving her in the basement to face her fears. The first thing she sees is Grandma all burned up and saying, Off with his head! 
Luke visits Mary at her clinic, and they have an exchange and discuss the whereabouts of Beth's killer, so they go to a junkyard to follow up on a lead. This episode, Mouse's dad references Scarecrow and the origin of the fear toxin, and that Alice is being dosed with the toxin undoubtedly at the moment, and then he tries to leverage his freedom for Alice's location, which ultimately kind of works, but doesn't. I've been looking forward to this. Join the flashback of Alice serving tea to Grandma as she gets smacked for making the tea too sweet, and then Grandma pours the tea over Alice's hands, then cuts her hair off. The whole psychological torture aspect is pretty humorous because at one point, Alice is shown as a grown woman who's still intimidated by this fragile old lady. It's treason, then. Mouse's dad slaps Alice across the face for calling Mommy Dearest old and haggard, which she is. Dad is planning on escaping as we resume the future timeline, or the present, where he, Kate and Jacob have him tied up to try to find Alice's location. He is trying to untie his hands as Kate is distracted getting him a glass of water and he attempts to cut his own throat to keep them from finding Alice, but he manages to mess it up and only cause a superficial wound. Just a flesh wound. Now Luke and Mary are out looking for the car that is in question that Mouse's dad, Mr. Cartwright, was driving the night that Beth was killed. That's right, Multiverse Crisis Beth, not Alice, but Beth. It was complete with the rifle in the trunk that killed Beth. Yes, that's right, they find it at a junkyard inexplicably. And Batwoman calls Mary and asks her, how to close the wound on Mouse's dad's neck. That's right, as he's bleeding out and Kate is afraid of losing him because he still has information that they need. He has not given them the location of Alice yet, so they need that. Mary instructs her on how to close the wound, but Kate ends up using a staple gun. That's right, a staple gun. That's what we use to close up wounds, right? Things like <laughs> some things I'm alone. <laughs> Alice is having a hallucination of Batwoman and Jacob Kane fighting in front of her. That's right, her dad and her sister, her twin sister, fighting in front of her because of this fear toxin. Then they come to a consensus after talking a little bit that she can't be saved and they leave her tied to the chair. Thank you. Alice knocks over the chair that she's tied to, frees herself from the toxin mask, but she's still locked in the basement, crying hysterically and on the verge of suicide. Just at that moment, coincidentally, thank you writing, Jacob arrives and pleads with her not to kill herself. He injects her with a drug to nullify the fear toxin. Didn't know they had such a thing. And we have a slight chance of redemption for our most notorious villain thus far. Throughout the entire episode, Alice has referred to Grandma Cartwright as the Queen of Hearts. Just found that worth noting. Calm down, now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Do you want another phone? Jacob is seen comforting Alice, and Alice asks where Kate is. Jacob tells her that Kate got Cartwright to talk, to find her whereabouts, and that he still cares about her very much. Kate gets Cartwright to confess to shooting Beth, and that Grandma got her earrings from Johnny, Mouse, as a present who got them from Kate and Beth's mother after the crash. Beth finds Mom's head in the refrigerator in the garage, which is always a welcome surprise. <laughs> At that point, Kate gets Cartwright to admit that his mother really, really wanted Alice and Kate's mom's face. So he wanted to take their face off? Oh, that never ends well. I'd like to take his, his face off. Yes, it's also at this point that things decide to get a little bit kinky with my favorite short-haired lesbian. The lesbian! <laughs> No, not because of what she's wearing, but because she decides to go full Carradine and, yeah, choke this guy to death. Which, all right, let's get it on. Bring out the gimp. See that a full-grown Beth got tired of old lady Cartwright. Cartwright! Ordering her around and turned her oxygen into a flamethrower and burns her to a crisp. Have you ever made tea, Alice? I have. Then you ought to know how to keep it from being so sweet. <laughs> Jacob and Alice get back and try to revive Cartwright. Alice is seemingly relieved, though, and Jacob is, of course, distraught by the death because he still wanted information about his wife from Cartwright. Alice congratulates Jacob on both of his daughters becoming killers. What a thing to celebrate. Mary and Luke are researching Mom Cartwright, and Kate is in an alley drinking and lamenting her decision to actually choke Cartwright to death. 
and Alice joins her for a drink. Alice tells Kate that they've got work to do because those bodies don't bury themselves. So there you have it, Batwoman episode 115, off with her head. It wasn't a good episode. We got to see some cool death scene with, you know, Grandma Cartwright. But at the same time, who doesn't want to see Rachel Scarston turn an oxygen tank into a flamethrower and roast an old bag that's been mean to her? So I can't hardly fault her here. And Mouse's dad is now dead. So all we got to worry about is Mouse out there running around hopped up on fear toxin from Scarecrow, which shockingly they keep referencing these mainline Batman adversaries and batman's rogues gallery in this show you know last week it was joker's daughter so i really don't think that they need to let kate kane tackle any of batman's main villains and i'm going to cover that in an article in a later video probably tomorrow but let's take this thing home it's gone on long enough that's what she said <laughs> All right, moving right along to the rest of the evening and the day here. We're not going to let a little thing like, you know, that thing slow us down. No, the place to be reviews. There's where you can find us on social media, of course. Hail the fandom menace. And tune in tonight, 835 Eastern, right here on the channel. Episode 93, live of the podcast. Monday night, going in raw. Myself, Tony Tone Deaf, Link Elect 7, The Groovinator. The Don of Two Cents Toy Salvador and making his debut, Franchise History TV, will be on hand tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So tune in. Remember, if I don't see you, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. There's another video, and that's coming up next.